uh, now, about five seconds. Thank you, Jesus. And to you all on the telephone, please mute. I'm going to be greeting the people online right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Truly, God is great and he's greatly to be praised. We just thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy and all that he's doing in the lives of his people. And all of you who are online, I uh, thank God for you. And I'm praying that you would begin to log on. As you can see, I am here with one of the site pastors of Bethesda by the name Amen. of Elder Joe Grigsby. How you doing, Elder? Amen. Amen. Pastor, I'm doing well. God bless yeah. everyone. Yes, yes. Honored, honored to be on with you. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's a blessing. Anytime we study God's word, um, it is a blessing, you know, uh, uh -huh. He does not reveal his word to everybody. And so sometimes we take it for granted when we're able to um, seek out and find the truth of God's word. Um, yes. It's not a light thing for us to understand anything that God is saying. Online, we already have 12 people that are on. Um, and I'm praying that more of you get on. So as you start liking and sharing, um, this uh, audience will increase. Last night, we had about 500 people watching the Bible study. Um, and to those of you online, I want you to know that I have some of the greatest jewels on the planet with me and they are by phone. Um, and it's some of the mothers of our church who don't have social media. Um, and so they're on the Bible study by phone. So Elder Grisby, uh, your new wow. day Bible class, we're going to have to do it by phone, man. We got we to gotta get it back up and running. The saints All are right. asking for it. It's in high demand. Uh, you know, we don't want to lose out on that rich, rich word of God. Um, yes. You know, and tonight we will be in uh, Second Corinthians. And uh, Elder Grizzly, last night you had a suggestion since we're on Zoom that I would uh, start maybe inviting some people on, um, seeing that it went so well. And next week on Tuesday night, we'll have Bishop Noel Jones on. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bishop he Noel is Jones is going to be on. Oh, Bishop my goodness. Jones. Yes, he agreed to come on. Um, and share a little bit, whatever, you know, he the bishop, so whatever he would like to share, it'd be great. Um, just want to keep in touch with the people. Be, be, even before, um, you know, what we'll do, I'm going to ask you to open us up in prayer. And then I have a little bit of some reflection that I want to give. And then we're going to get right into the word of God, because it's a lot tonight. As you know, chapter 10 is explosive. So if you would open us up in prayer. Yes, I'd be honored, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to come to study your word. And we thank you for those that are uh, tuning in to the live broadcast and those that are online with us right now. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will magnify your word in our hearing tonight. Lord, that you will bless your word in the name of Jesus. Let your word find a settling place deep within our hearts, souls, and minds. Lord, we pray that your word will change us. Let your word strengthen us, O oh God, and strengthen yes. your people. O oh God, we ask, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you be glorified tonight in the yes. name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask, Lord, that all those that are listening in, Lord God, we ask, Lord, that you would touch them tonight, that you would strengthen Lord, them tonight. God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will meet their needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, O oh God, that you will encourage their hearts. O oh God, we ask it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Tonight. Amen. God bless you, Elder Grisby. And right now, probably all over this land, especially on Pacific Standard Time, pastors everywhere, because Wednesday night is typically a Bible study night. So prayerfully, they're all online. And so there's a lot of options. And so Elder Grisby, I really applaud the saints of the living God who have decided to stop by Bethesda churches. There's yes. 20 of them on right now. Um, to stop by Bethesda churches and decide to receive the word here. Um, one thing that we can vouch for is that we do not uh, cut, add to, or anything with the word of God. We want the word of God to remain pure because that's the only time that it can heal. 
The only time it can truly heal and do what it's going to do is when it's left untainted. You taint God's word with your own thoughts. You taint God's mm -hmm. word with your own mind. You taint God's word with your own agenda. You taint God's word with your emotions. You taint God's word with your carnality, some of which we'll get into tonight. And so I thank the Lord that he's given us a spirit of humility because you have to approach God's word with humility. Yes. You have to show up to God's word. You can't say, I know it all. If you feel like that, then you'll never receive from God. You have to receive from God from a place of sitting at his feet. You know, the Bible speaks about the feeding of the 5,000. And one of the interesting things that he told them to do in one of the accounts, the Bible says Jesus told them to sit down, sit down before they were fed. And that was a sign of humility. It was a sign that, Lord, I'm allowing you to serve me with your word. And so it's important that you receive the word of God in a place of sitting and not standing and not debate and that you just allow for it to hit your heart. And so we pray that hearts will be open tonight. Um, and Elder Beersby, this is gonna be a task because we're gonna be going back be between the Facebook community and also the telephone community. But let's jump right into it in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians in chapter 10. Those of you who are online, God bless you. I see all of you waving at us. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I see you coming on. Good to see you, Sister Cherie. Good to see you, Reuben. Good to see you, Lowenda. Good to see you, um, uh, Mother Diana. Good to see, good to see, good to see. I see all of you coming on. God bless you. God bless you. I am asking that you like and share. Um, the goal tonight is that we have a thousand people watch the Bible study. So um, I, I want it in because in this time, you need the word of God. So uh, 2 Corinthians 10. Yes. Very familiar passage. Elder Grisby, if you would read verses 1 through um, 2, and then we'll have some commentary, and then we'll do 3 through 6. But if you can read 1 through uh, 2, that'd be great. Yes, and it reads like this. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who is present and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Yes, yeah, so Paul now is, he's about to get into kind of the uh, dissemin uh, 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 di uh, division that was taking place among some. They saw the greatness, Elder Grisby, of the Corinthian church and saw that Paul was taking a special interest in them. And so some were trying to swoop in from the side and downplay who Paul was. And he, he's gonna touch on this a, a little later, but yes. notice Elder Grisby, how um, he points out in verse two, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. In other words, there was a group or a sect of people that was trying to come against them carnally, trying to come against them in their natural self, trying to come up against them with their natural words, uh, trying to downplay their reputation in hopes that the people would begin to cleave to them and not Paul. But Paul points mm -hmm. out that their thinking about them was that they were fleshly. We are not flesh. We are spiritual. Who you really are is spirit. And if the children of God don't start seeing themselves as spiritual beings, if they only see themselves as carnal beings, then the only thing you'll ever talk about is how your body is hurting. The only thing you'll ever talk about is how your, your rent didn't get paid. The only thing you'll ever talk about is all the natural things of this world, not realizing that you're just passing through. We are pilgrims passing through here. And I think the Lord is allowing us to see that through this COVID-19 
that we are pilgrims passing through here. And this is not our home. You know, Elder Grisby, can you kind of touch on a little bit why what causes people to really cleave to the flesh and not be able to walk in the spirit? Well, I think it's more of this natural, a natural way of reacting uh, to things, Pastor. Hmm. Uh, you know, we grow up, we grow up one way. And then after God saves us, we come into uh, uh, something different. And uh, it causes us to have to learn uh, how to walk in the spirit. Uh, we, like I said, we've been so used to walking naturally and walking in the flesh that we you know, have a tendency to always want to uh, lean that way or go that way. But like you said, We've been filled with the spirit now, yeah. and uh, so we, you know, we're we're different. Uh, we got the spirit of God abiding in us, and we we have a tendency not to to rely on spiritual things. I don't know why, but we have a tendency to always want to rely on things that we can touch, things that we can see, you know, physical things. Yes. So I think that's it right there, Pastor. Uh, uh, you know, just uh not uh really recognizing who we really really are as uh, spiritual beings of uh, being filled with the spirit of god you know elder grisby thank you for sharing that because you know i'm 46 years old my grandmother died in her 80s grandfather is in his high 80s and they come from a generation where there was not as much data or competition for your mind. It's not that they didn't have anything to get into. They had stuff to get into. My grandmother told me how she used to party. My grandfather told me how he used to go, go down to the pool hall and all of that. But think about that. They would have to go down to the pool hall. He told me one time joking that he'd go down to the pool hall and he'd be rushing because he knew that my grandmother was a fighter. He didn't want her to come down there and go get him. So, you know, he only had so much time he could be down at the pool hall. In this generation, though, you got the internet. Yeah. Which means you don't even have to go nowhere to get into filth. Yeah. You can be inundated and bombarded with so much stuff while sitting in your living room. And so all of that is competing for the child of God's mind. And the enemy mm -hmm. knows that as many seeds as he can plant in your mind, in your spirit, it may keep you, once it's nurtured and once it's grown up, keep you from walking right. in the spirit. Think about it. Yeah. Back to my grandmother, Elder Grisby. She went to church on Sunday. The preacher man spoke a word into her life. The whole family was there at the same time hearing that same word. She went home. They all talked about that same word. There wasn't a lot of TV stations that had competing voices. I know from even my age, our television, there was no cable. Right. We didn't have cable when I was grow growing up in my grandmother's house. There was like channel two, channel four, five, seven, I think 11 and 13. So I, I, I'm in love with Andy Griffin, for instance, because I grew up watching those shows. Right. And they, and they all deal with a small town and that traditional values. And, and so that's kind of embedded in you. So even though you weren't watching a church show, I never saw no skin. Right. There wasn't no naked women running around on the, the regular stations. Wasn't no cursing on the regular stations. Now all of that is competing. Right. So Paul is pointing out to them, these people think that we're natural, but we're not natural. We're supernatural. So go on and read the next verses because now the, it'll make sense when you read verse the next a couple of verses, three through six, Elder Grisby. All right. Pastor, can I add something there? Yes, sir. Those first two verses. I uh, was looking at these two verses and I was very uh, impressed with Paul. I thought it was very interesting what he was doing and how that he was uh, seemingly uh, taking on the attitude of a servant here, yeah. uh, being, uh, he, I seen him not really uh, using the authority that he really, really had. 
Yes. He recognized who he was spiritually. And uh, he knew that there were some people that had ill thoughts of him uh, that was, like you said, was wanting to uh, take over the church and uh, were jealous of him. But we find that uh, it very interesting that he was not wanting to use his authority. Uh, that's why he's saying, I'm, I'm, I beseech you <laughs> yes. that I don't have yes. to be bold. I, I want to be, you know, humble and uh, be meek before you as Christ was. But all the while he knew who he was. He knew the authority. He knew where he stood spiritually with God. He knew where he, he was an apostle and he didn't want to use that on them. And uh, what I've seen there is we got to be careful uh, at, uh, you know, and respect the position that God, well, the authority of, of the people that God has put in our, uh, to lead us. Uh, yeah. We can't afford to uh, uh, disrespect the position. But it's like your position, for example, pastor, uh, you're the senior pastor of our church. And uh, uh, we should not disrespect that position. Uh, even though you're a very humble man, you're very generous, but, and so I think that's what the people, one of the things that the people were seeing, you know, they seen him, he, you know, they knew who he was and they were used to being around him. So there was a kind of a disrespect going on there, but we cannot disrespect the position. When you start disrespecting the position of somebody, you, you can get in trouble. And Absolutely. Uh, that is so powerful, Elder Grisby. And, and, you, and, and you've heard me talk about it, and I, I'll leave it with this just because you brought up. I just typed in online that do not think that meekness means weakness. Yes, right. Meekness is not weakness. Just because you humbled yourself and shut your mouth in a situation does not mean you're weak. It means you trust in the strong God that you have. Right. And I, I was taught this by my first apostolic pastor, Bishop Roland E. Harrison. He said, you may not like me. You may not think much of me, but you got to respect the position and got to understand that when I'm in this circle, God's anointing is on my life. And he has placed you with me so that you could be fed. So if you come up against right. me, you're coming up against God. And if you come up against God, right. all you're doing is hindering the purpose that he has for your life. You're delaying the blessings from coming in you because you don't have a good mindset about the position. Also, that's why I told some people, and I'm so glad our church, we're dialed in. Whatever the people who are coming to Bethesda, whatever their political affiliation, I have encouraged them through every administration that was only been two, this since I've been pastor, telling them, don't disrespect the position of president. Don't disrespect the position of governor. Don't, don't disrespect the position. You may not like the person, may, may think, I don't think much of them. But once you start attacking them, understand that there's an authority thing that you're coming up against. God had to allow whatever is happening. So what we do is we pray for them who have rule over us. Come on, let's move on to these next verses because this is the good part if the first part wasn't a good part, <laughs> as if the word, any part of the word ain't the good part. Read um, three through six. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Mm -hmm. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God mm -hmm. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a ready having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Elder Grisby, what's the first thing that sticks out to you when you read that? In fact, I'll send that to everybody. The first thing that sticks out to you when you read those verses, um, I'll talk to the online and on the telephone. Telephone, What's the first thing that sticks out in you guys' mind uh, when you hear those verses three through six? Anybody would like to share? Well, one the thing that sticks out to me, Pastor, and jumps out at me is number one, uh, though we walk in the flesh, 
meaning that we are, you know, because we're in that body, uh, we don't war after the flesh. Uh, it's also, you know, we just because we're in this body, don't take us lightly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't war after the flesh. I see Paul kind of giving them a warning there. We don't war after the flesh. We don't war the regular way. Yeah. Uh, don't disrespect who we are. Uh, just because I'm around you and you see me and you, you might hear me talk and you might hear me interact with other people. Don't, uh, don't, don't get disrespectful to me. Uh, then he also means that he also opens up and says the word war there. He said, uh, you know, uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not uh, war after the flesh. So he brings out war and makes you kind of think about what's he talking about war? What kind of war is he talking about there? Yes. And, uh, you know, from our study and research, we know that he's talking about spiritual yes. warfare there. Uh, and so that jumped out at me right there, Pastor. Uh, you know, we're in our spiritual warfare and uh, uh, we fighting against spiritual enemies. And yes. We have, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, and against, uh, we uh, fight for spiritual purposes. So, yeah, it's a, that, that spiritual warfare jumped out at me right there too, Pastor. That, that's powerful because when you really understand, truly understand, I don't think the children of God, I think we're still growing in that area um, because we keep waffling back and forth between the natural and the spiritual. So on the one hand, we would like to be spiritual, but our mind hasn't been renewed to the place to where I can be led by the unctions of God. There are some times when the Lord is not speaking to you. He's giving you unctions. I use the word unction because sometimes people are waiting for God to use words with them. Like he's going to speak to them on the side of their bed and say, I want you to go down to the store and this kind of thing. Most of the time, God is giving you unctions. He's leading you by the spirit because it can't be interpreted readily, except for the one who's operating in a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, word of prophecy, can't be interpreted immediately as, oh, this is God. So you have mm -hmm. an idea. You have a thought. It says, get up and call your son. Get up and go down here. You're not really understanding why you're, you're being led that way, but because you don't fight it, you go with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In this season, some, uh, even as I've been doing the teachings and I can see um, in the spirit, because it's not like somebody says, Pastor, I disagree with you, but I can just see in the spirit that there's kind of a little struggle. When this whole thing broke out, there was an unction in my spirit, sudden don't smell right. Sudden don't smell right. Now, some, some people thought, oh, well, Pastor must have been watching CNN. He must have been watching Fox. No, 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 no. Ain't because of the news show. It's fine enough to watch the news. It's because of something that I had in my spirit that says something is going on behind the scenes. This is different. God is allowing something here that's different. Now, of course, a couple of months later, now they're finding out there's some lab and stuff like that. And there was some cross-contamination. China was hiding this and that. So now all of that is coming out. But before it even comes out, the Lord had already put that in my spirit. The Lord had already, and I spoke this over the pulpit to all of you guys. I said, listen, there are some people who want the shutdown for safety because they don't know what to do as a government official. I think we think because somebody operates in government that that makes them smart. That doesn't make you smart because you're in government. It just means that we, the people, have elected one of our own to represent our desires. That's what government is supposed to do in a federalist republic. But so, so you know, we tend to think these people are smart. So as soon as the, 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 the government person says, shut down, I saw the church running around like they were the expert. Then they got the medical guy up there. He said it was gonna be 2 million deaths, okay. Something about that just didn't quite sound right. It wasn't that the man was wicked. It wasn't that he was evil. It wasn't even the fact that coronavirus is not killing people. It's killing people and it's killing black people at a higher rate. I'll talk about that in a minute. But, but 
It didn't sit right with my spirit. Then when they went to shut down the churches, Elder Grizzly, watch this. I got up in front of Bethesda Central and I said, there are some spirits out there that want to shut down the church. Mm -hmm. Now I saw people moving their seat, changing the way they were sitting, feeling all uncomfortable, but I knew it in my spirit. I knew it in my spirit. And of course now it's coming out. They just interviewed that governor from New Jersey, Elder Grisby, and um, they asked him, they said, why is it that you guys shut down churches and didn't shut down the liquor stores? He said, well, the, the liquor stores, some of our scientists and some of our social scientists came to us and told us that if we shut down the liquor stores, that's gonna make people um, who, who need the alcohol uh, really feel bad and be emotional and that's gonna cause them to have some, some bad mental issues and stuff. And what the interviewer asked was, well, what do you think would happen when you shut down the church? If you shut down the church, don't you think that might keep some people who need that connection? Don't you think that will put them in a bad way? Don't you think, he said, you know, we didn't really think about that. Oh, uh, yeah, let me tell you something, of course you did. You don't want the church open. So now, given that we walk in the spirit and we're walking by faith and not by sight, the church of the living God has to know what's being presented in the way of information. It's the same way that my grandmother knew a snake when it was a snake and she had no data. Think mm -hmm. about that. I told, uh, I was talking to uh, Mother Wiley last week and I said, mother, listen, for nine years, you've been telling us to wash our hands, that we need to use hand sanitizer, that we need to stay away from people with flu. You've been telling us that for nine years. Now, all of a sudden, that's big news. People making money now, I guess Mother Wiley should have a million dollars. She's been saying that for nine years. Because not only is that her profession, but as a spiritual woman, she was putting out there, hey, church, we need to clean up. We need to talk about health a little more. We need to... She's already talking about that because that was given in the spirit before they presented it. If we do it the right way, Elder Grisby, we'll have data before man has the data when we walk in the spirit because God's not going to leave us without what we need to know in order to survive and in order to thrive in him. So let's get down to it. Let's, 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 let's get down to it just because uh, that was a long spill there. He says, we walk not in the flesh. I want to turn. Let me show my screen. Let me see, can I share my screen with the people on Facebook and then I'll share it out with the people who are uh, um, on online with me. I'm gonna share my presentation. Let me share it with you. Elder Grisby, can you see my presentation? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, I can. So, so spiritual warfare, do you see what I see? And when I say the spirit, when he gave me this, is not do you see what I see, Tobias Brook and see, is do you see what I see, God? God is asking, do you see what I see? See, when you walk in the spirit, you have God goggles on. When you walk in the spirit, you have God vision on. It's like having on these glasses. When I take off these glasses, everything is blurry that I read. When I put them on, now I can see clearly. So, so look what the spirit gave me. The first thing was the definition of carnal. Those of you who are online and those of you who are listening, the definition of carnal, the word is sarkikos, sarkikos. And it means having the nature of flesh, sensual, controlled by animal appetites, governed by human nature instead of by the spirit of God. Now I want you uh, just think about that. Think about that definition. It's controlled by animal appetites. What is what are our ap animal appetites? We want to see something. We want to taste something. We want to feel something, right? Touch, hearing, sight. We're operated by that. So what does the devil try to bombard us with? Sight, taste, what we hear. One of the reasons why they're pointing out that African Americans are being impacted by the coronavirus at such a high rate is because we have pre-existing conditions. Now those pre-existing conditions, um, we have heart disease, 
we have all types of ailments already in our body. So now when you catch the coronavirus, which impacts the lungs, you out of here, gone, because you got a pre-existing condition. So the enemy knows this. If he can get African-Americans to be controlled by their appetite, which means you can't push back that plate. I know some people talk about fasting, they can't fast. Well, if they used to tell us, if you can't fast, you can't last. Right. In this, in this walk, you better learn how to fast. You better be able to tell your body to do what you want it to do, not your body telling you what to do. In fact, Elder Grisby, what do you see when you see this definition of carnal? I, I, I see fleshly, mm. flesh, flesh on, uh, flesh in control. <laughs> That's what I see. Yes, sir. Flesh in control, mm. relying on natural things, relying on the flesh. And Pastor, you know, there's nothing good that comes out of the flesh. Nothing good. The flesh is not going to tell you to get up in the morning and pray. Huh. The flesh is not going to tell you to read your word. The flesh is not going to tell you to fast. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, nothing nothing good is going to come out of it. That's what I see when I see carnal doing fleshly things. So it's then, but not here. Without a Grisby, you, you know this just as what you're saying. Look at this. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So now we can substitute that definition in there, right? Mm -hmm. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshy. They're not controlled by the flesh. They're not controlled by the appetite. Our weapons, you know, when I hear of saints of God, you know, that have to go out to the parking lot to argue, that's called carnality. That's what that's called. That's called the flesh. You're being mm -hmm. controlled by your appetites. You got to be right so bad that you're willing to embarrass yourself, your God, your family, your church, because you just had to get this off your chest. You said it was on your mind. Well, it needs to get off your mind. It's from the pit of hell. Get it off of your mind and get the mind of Christ. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Yes. Those appetites will kill us. And I don't know about you, but I came, I came from mm. sin. Now, I know some people act like they didn't come from sin. Not only was I born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but I was cutting the rug out there in the world. And everything I was connected to was killing me. Elder yeah. Grisby, I ask you this. Talk to the people. Talk to the people about ways to move out of the flesh and into the spirit. First of all, you're going to have to uh, be filled with God's spirit. Hmm. You can't follow the spirit unless you have the spirit. So yeah. first of all, you're going to have to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And... Uh, when you're there, you're going to have to uh, begin to seek God and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So you're going to have to get uh, know God and, and know him better. Uh, you you're going to have to get on your bony kneecaps and pray and seek God's face. And uh, you're going to have to start doing spiritual things, uh, reading your word, uh, you know, committing that time into seeking God and seeking his face and read that word, start giving God some time, start giving him some quality time. And you're going to have to fast. You're going to have to put the, the, uh, put that food down as pastor said, you're going to have to fast. Uh, no way that you can, uh, whip this flesh or this, you know, this carnal nature or carnal desire without, you know, attacking it, uh, through fasting. Uh, so you're going to have to do that, and uh, you're going to have to, uh, uh, as I said, read the Word of God. When you're reading God's Word, you you know, I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, study is worship. Yes. So you're going to have to worship. You're going to have study to worship, worship in that manner, and then you're going to have to worship God uh, and do these things. If you just read your Word, if you pray, if you fast uh, and, and worship God, these are ways that you can... Uh, build up yourself spiritually and overcome the flesh. Wow, Elder Grisby, thank you for that. I mean, if, if that's, if, man, that should be in a book right there. You just gave us step by step by step. Because as people are coming out of sin, and even the child of God, 
who has been saved for some years still has to go through that process. Because one thing I learned about this flesh, you can't play with it. Mm -mm. You'll think this flesh is dead and that you got it going on. And before you know it, you'll be thinking about a cuss word. Right. You'll be thinking about going back. You, you, you can't play with this flesh. And so he says the weapons of our warfare, the weapons, notice now, strategic tools for aggressive force, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but what are they? Look what he says here. He says they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So how are you going to pull it down? It's going to have to come through God. But he said to the pulling down of strongholds and elder Grizzly, you know it is, I've taught this before. Strongholds in the Greek is the word Ochiroma. It's mm -hmm. Ochiroma. And it means a castle, a stronghold, a fortress, fastness, anything one which one relies on. It deals with the arguments and the reasonings by which a dispute endeavors to fortify his opinion. The devil knows that if he just can't get you to backslide physically, he'll try to get your mind. Yes. So what Paul does is he says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of Oche Roma. See, the stronghold is what has people hostage. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Elder Grisby, and we have to teach this, and I'll talk about it tomorrow in the minister's meeting. You got to teach a young minister. Sometimes they'll get discouraged. They'll pray for somebody and wonder why that person still bound. Right. Because you was trying to cast the devil off them. When the problem with them wasn't a demon possession, the problem was a mindset. Mm -hmm. See, your mind can only be changed by the renewing. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which is only the word of God. Right. So after the devil has been cast out of you and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you still have to have your mind renewed. Right. But some people, some people don't like Bible class. And I'm trying to figure out how you a child of God and you don't like the word of God. And mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to say it for all America to hear it. If you claim to be a child of God and you don't like the word of God, I doubt you a child of God. All children of God want to hear their father speak. All children of God. In fact, there are boys that I've worked with, largely Latin and Black boys, who don't have their father in their life. And I have to give them illumination, Elder Grisby, to let them see that the reason why you act in such a fool is because your father ain't in your life and you're actually looking for him. Right. Mm -hmm. You're looking for him. So right. we got to get that changed up. We got to get you to the place to where you don't feel the need to look for your natural father. Now you have to begin to listen to your spiritual father. He says to the pulling down of stronghold. So what the thing, the thing that has to come down is the stronghold. What's that stronghold is that mindset. Mm -hmm. That mindset has to come down. Listen, I, I, I saw for myself at a conference they had somebody down on the ground, Elder Grisby, rolling around, putting the oil on the person. And that person was looking up at them and the altar workers were getting more from it than the person. I said, y'all go on and stop, go on and stop. Stop all that yelling, stop all that rolling, stop all that oiling. Sit that person up and ask them, do you wanna be saved? Right. Cause that's the question. You wasting all this good oil? Do you want to be saved? Has your mind been changed? Have you repented of your sins? That's why the Bible says, Peter told them, listen, on the day of Pentecost, he didn't say, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say that. I've, I've heard people misquote that. He said, repent and be baptized, Ooh. every one of you. Yeah. See, I got to repent. Mm -hmm. What Peter is telling us is, if you ain't willing to repent, ain't no need to get baptized. Right. You'll go down a devil and come up a wet devil because right. your mind ain't changed. You got to repent of your sins and then we can talk about some baptism. Well, come on, let's move through here. We got to move through. 
The next thing that the, the spirit showed me was captive. When he talked about captive, let me show my screen to the people again. He meant to lead away or to bring under subjection. So Elder Grisby, let's look at this again and then I want you to respond to what I'm saying. He said, pulling down a stronghold, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. Help somebody bring their thoughts under subjection, Elder Grisby. Talk to us about what Paul is saying here. Right. First of all, I want to say, Pastor, there are three sources of thought. Mm. There are God's thoughts. Yes. Your thoughts. Yes. And the thoughts of the enemy. Yes. Those are the three sources of thought. And one thing, the enemy's thoughts are always negative. They're always negative. They're always detrimental to the things of God. And they're always something negative and detrimental to you. Our little thoughts, or what we call them, as we talked before, Pastor, the you thoughts are easily overridden. But God's thoughts are always positive. Yeah. All things are possible with him. So we must recognize that there are three sources of thoughts. And they're going to come on your mind. So we have a, what, a mind battle going on here. Wow. Yes, and we must use discretion, saints of God, with what we let come on our mind. Mm. Something that's coming on your mind that's negative, we that are filled with the Holy Ghost and that are spiritual, we, we know that that's the enemy's thought. So we know to what? Rebuke that negative thought. Yes. You have to rebuke it. Oh, yes. You just can't just let any old kind of thing come on your mind because that's where the battlefield is. It's in your mind. And that's where and he, uh, the enemy tries to infiltrate our minds through thoughts. As the pastor already mentioned, it is through these thoughts that he tries to bring negativity. He tries to bring doubt. He tries to bring fears. He tries to bring anything that's against God to your mind. And that and there it is right there. And that's how he can gain control of your mind and put up a stronghold for you if you allow him to do that so we have to recognize those three sources of thought we have to lean to the thoughts of god uh positive things recognizing the word of god first of all this is why it's so important that we read god's word and we know god's word so we can battle the negativity or the neg negative things that the enemy is trying to uh, bring to our mind. And he's constantly broadcasting saints. He's constantly broadcasting negativity. What happened to you when you first got the Holy Ghost? Didn't the enemy try to tell you that you didn't have nothing? Yes. He try to bring negative thoughts in your mind. Uh, one of the things that was with me, he tried to get me to think that I couldn't live a safe life. Mm -hmm. and, but the devil is a liar. Understand that he's a liar and he's all these is going to try to bring about his negativity. So watch those thoughts. Don't mm. let him bind you. He's trying to bind you. Uh, he's trying to bring about false imaginations, uh, false things. Matter of fact, uh, in our study of this pastor, and these are things that I learned a lot from your book and a lot from you, is that the enemy would try to use pretense. Yes. Uh, what, or pretension. That's where we get our word pretend from. Yes. Uh, he'll try to bring things and make things bigger in your life than what they really, really are. He try to make uh, negative things huge. He, he uses that on the saints of God. Uh, but we got to realize that all things are possible with our God and that our God is stronger than the enemy, that there's really, really no fight between God and the enemy. He's nothing but a speck to our God, but that our God is in control. So we have to realize and recognize who we are we have to gauge those thoughts and use uh, uh, precaution or uh, and not just let anything come on our mind. Yes. And we have to seek the thoughts of God. Wow. Elder Grisby, the word of God, this is where its preeminence takes full course. Because what happens is children of God try to win the battle of their mind with their mind and not with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So so it, it works like this. 
the devil puts in a thought, you're not going to be able to pay for nothing this month. You're going to be down. You're going to be out of the street. That's what's happening in your mind. And what he wants to do, just like a, a recorder, he wants to have to play and play and play. And then what happens is your anointing is muted because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He can't yeah. expect to receive nothing from God. So this is what happens, Elder Grisby. The child of God has to understand that they have to move past just trying to think a positive thought because it ain't about whether it's a quote unquote positive thought. It's about whether it's the word of God. The only thing that will bring the devil to his knees is the word of God. Jesus showed us that when he was tempted by Satan. Yeah. He smacked that devil down with the word of God. So mm -hmm. when I'm getting the thought, oh no, you're not going to be able to pay for this or whatever. The child of God has to not just think, but they have to say, mm -mm, he shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. You yes. have to say that. Don't just think it. You have to say that. You know, today, as we were um, at the school and, and we're passing out laptops to all the kids. So as I was running to the cars, some of the kids didn't have their ID. And so I said, well, just give me your ID. So I'm just making up something right now. So they say 613482. So I would say 613482, 683482, 683482. As I was running to the car, 683482. And I would go to the car. Then somebody would say something. And as soon as they would say something, guess what happened to my, my memorizing? I lost it. Yes. Because, I, watch this, another word took captivity over the previous word I had. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So what the child of God has to do is, when you're running into the battle, you got to go in with the word of God. And you have to have enough word that you can do combat. Hallelujah. In the Yes, yes. So it's not just he shall supply all my need. It's also the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes. Hallelujah. See what I'm saying? He wants me to prosper even as my soul prospers. Mm -hmm. He said he would withhold no good thing from me. He right. said promotion doesn't come from the east nor the west, but it comes uh -huh. from the Lord. Yes. He said some trust in chariots and horses, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord. Yes. He will give me the power to get wealth. Hallelujah. He said, if I would be obedient, I'd be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed going in. Blessed. That's the way the child of God has to talk. And the devil got to run out of your house when you start talking like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He packs up his bags. He going down the street. Yeah. He going down to your neighbor and mess with them a little bit. But he ain't going to be messing with you about your wealth. That's the way the child of God has to. So let's let's move Elder Grisby because he says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. Child of God, I want you to know there is a supernatural release of your anointing when you're walking in the ways of God. Hallelujah. The enemy the world, even material things become subject to the child of God when they're walking in the will of God. Hallelujah. When I'm not walking in the will of God, I have to hope. I have to Hallelujah. look for good luck. Child of God, mm -hmm. I'd not be looking for good luck. Glory be to God. We, we ain't dealing with good luck. We dealing with the will of God. See, because I'm in a kingdom, Elder Grisby, I have kingdom privileges. Right. And the kingdom privileges come with a contract, and we call that the new covenant. Hallelujah. Because I have the covenant blessings on my life. And yes. these are blessings that are better than Abraham's, better than Isaac's, better than Jacob's, best, better than Joseph's, better than Moses, better than Joseph. Glory be to God. The covenant blessings are the new covenant provisions of Jesus Christ. He says, greater works than these shall ye do. Yes. So since I'm walking, walking in that provision, he says, this is the only thing I need you to do. He says, don't have no other God before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. He says, keep my commandments, because if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. 
So yeah. the child of God, when they're dealing with a bombarding of the enemy, what they really want to do is make sure their feet is on the right place. Right. Because when my obedience is fulfilled, when I sow my tithe, Elder Grigsby, I'm a tither, man. I'm mm -hmm. a tither. I yeah. sow my seed. I have sold my seed for years. I believe by the power of God, I got seeds that ain't even came up yet. There's wow. harvest on the way. The Lord has called me to be a distribution center. So okay. now that we're in a financial situation. I've been speaking that for the children of God too. Yesterday mm -hmm. while I was teaching, uh, some of the saints said, oh, I already got my stimulus check. Let me tell you something. I'm just as in God's will to believe that when I was praying last week, I said, Lord, don't let there be a delay for the children of God. Let the children of God have everything that they need. Let it sprout up first. Put them ahead of the line. Dear Lord God, allow for my own blessing to be held back so that they can come forward. Because when you're walking in the kingdom provision, yes. God is not just expecting you to prosper. He wants you to prosper in him. Because yes. some are receiving material things, but it's not from God. I only want what God wants me to have. And if God yes. wants me to just have $5, that $5 will stretch me for a week. Your $50 will be gone today. God yes. has a way of making my, my beans and rice last for a week. And your filet mignon is gone. And now they're throwing away food because of this plague. So when everybody was trusting in the stock market, everybody was trusting in their own strength. Everybody was trusting in this is the greatest economy ever. In three weeks, the Lord allowed it to all shut down. But the children of God shall be kept through the storm. Mm -hmm. So you got to yes. make sure that your obedience is on point. I want to make sure that I've done right by people. Those of you who are listening and those of you who are watching this by Facebook, you better go apologize to somebody you got to art with. You can't take that into your next season. You got to say, I want my obedience to be fulfilled so that I can revenge all disobedience when it comes to God. Yeah. Glory be to God. Elder Griffey, I'll let you respond. Go ahead. On that right there, that's what I wanted to ask. I guess I'm responding in a question to you because it talks about you know, us getting our uh, revenge. Is that, is that talking about when we're, is that saying that when we're obedient to God and we're obedient to God's word and his will, that we get revenge on the enemy? Hallelujah, yes. Everything that the devil meant for evil, yes. God says it starts turning around for the good. And that's why the devil is trying to keep us carnal, Elder Grisby. The devil knows that as long as we stay carnal, the provision will be held up. But mm -hmm. as soon as we change our mind, come on now, what the Bible say in, in Second Chronicles, he said, if my people yes. who are called by my name would humble oh. themselves and pray. And the devil knows what the word says. The devil know the word better than we know the word. We just ain't walking in it. He, he knows that if, as soon as we humble ourselves, that the Lord is going to turn this plague. That's right. That's right. Glory Pastor. be to God. The devil knows that. So what does he try to do? He want to shut down the churches hoping that when we shut down the church, we shut down prayer. But I got news for the devil. I know that there's children of God that yeah, just because they can't come into church don't mean that they not the church and they're still praying in their homes. And we are bombarding the throne room of God with prayers unto God saying, Lord, it's time to turn the plague and there's going to be revenge taking place. And the enemy, everything that he meant for evil is about to turn around for good. And there's going to be more souls coming into the church <laughs> after this thing yes. than did before. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Pastor, Hallelujah. one thing also, also I wanted to say there, when we're talking about our obedience being fulfilled, that means we're, we're walking by faith. Yes. Our faith requires obedience. Mm. No way around it. When you walk by faith, you've got to be, that's, a matter of fact, that's one of the things that Bishop taught us, Pastor. Yes, sir. He said the purest form of faith is uh, being obedient to what God has told you to do. God has given you a word and you're obedient to it. That is the purest form of faith. And that's how, and I see that's how we can get our revenge on the enemy. That's our obedience being fulfilled because we're walking by faith. We're being obedient to what God told us to do. We're being obedient to God's word. Therefore, we're going to win. We're going to get our revenge. We're going to win the battle. Yes, yes, yes. And we walk in victory. 
Now, now let's touch these because we only have about 10 minutes left in this study. And I do think we can get through this whole chapter. Look what he says here though in seven, verse seven. Do ye look on the things after the outward appearance? <laughs> if any man trust to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as it would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letter, we, um, when we are absent, we will be all indeed when we are present. In other words, I can show you better than I can tell you. That's summarizing what Paul just said. He said, when we show up, we don't show you that we operate in the power of God and we don't operate in the flesh. But look at this verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Oh, I got to stop right there. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not wise to compare yourself with yourself. One of the ways that I've been able to track whether somebody is immature in the house of God is when you bring up to them, let's say that you're an accountability partner. I have some accountability partners, some bishops that uh, can call and I let them speak into my life. And they say, well, uh, Tobias, that's not the right way to say that. I know you, I know what you meant, but that's not the way a shepherd um, should, should really address it. Um, you want to do it this way. So I let them speak into my life. I don't try to find my peer and compare myself with my peer. Because mm -hmm. one of the ways we can find immaturity is when somebody says, well, at least I don't do this, or at least I didn't say this, or at least I'm not like this one, or at least, well, what about that person? What about, how come they get to do this? How come you telling it to me and not to them? Hold on, my grandparents taught me this. My grandfather didn't even have the Holy Ghost and he had enough sense to say this. Integrity is not about what everyone else is doing. Right. Integrity is about doing the right thing because you know it to be right. Yes. And Bishop even taught us that the children of God will do right when they know what right is. That's right. So, uh, yeah. so one of the things Paul is addressing here is these people that he was dealing with were commending themselves and comparing themselves with one another. Well, that's a problem. This generation does not want to be challenged. Mm -hmm. If you don't say exactly what they hope and feel, they start getting offended. They get their little feelings hurt. We got children running rampant and running crazy because can't nobody discipline them. You try to discipline them. Then, then the mama walk running up talking about, that's my kid. You don't talk to my kid that way and all of that. Well, okay, well, go on and raise your kid because you're doing a bad job of it, obviously. They running crazy. They tearing up everything. You're getting calls that they're getting suspended every day. Now, when the church of the living God, the Lord sends mentors into their life to love on them, you won't allow for that to take place because you're comparing yourself with yourself. Right. The children of God compare themselves with the standard of God, which there is his is. word. The yeah. only way for me, that's why, watch this children of God. These people that y'all allowing to talk into your life on the news and these government people, they're trying to tell you what morality is. How in the world could somebody who ain't got the Holy Ghost, don't love God, don't go to church, now tell us how we supposed to worship? I heard somebody on TV, he said, well, you know, you know, you don't need to go into the church building. Who you 
You ain't even saved. You don't speak about the children of God. You don't tell us how to worship. You don't tell us how to praise. You don't tell us how to lift our hands. God demands what he wants out of his church. And now they'll make you feel bad if you talk about a certain group of people and you bring up the word of God, they'll say you're intolerant. And they'll demonize you. They even had that other man that was running for president. He was telling the rest of us how to be moral. And I'm trying to figure out how in the world can you ever, ever talk about what morality is with your lifestyle. Stop. Stop that foolishness. Come on up under subjection to the word of God. And now when we look into the beautiful mirror, let me tell you something. I don't know about you. Some of you children of God may not be honest like this, but I'm going to be honest with you. Almost every time I read in the word of God and I look into that mirror, I see something else that needs to be fixed with me. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I see a strand of hair out of place. I, I see, I see, I see that I ain't matching. I ain't got the right righteousness clothes on all the time. I see sometimes that my motives ain't right. Sometimes my intent's not pure. Right. Sometimes I'm not walking in, in the great. So when you look in the word of God, that's what you're gonna get. But if you are comparing yourself with the person on the other pew, you might end up dying and going to hell. Right, yes sir. Elder, Elder Grisby, I'm, I'm gonna give you the last, last word on this, but I want you to talk to this last, these last verses, watch this. Cause he says, but we will not boast of the things out of our measure, but according to the measure of the rule, which God hath uh, distributed to us. Isn't that right? A measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reach not unto you, for we are come as, as far as unto you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is of other man's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that rejoice uh, glorieth, let him glory in the Lord for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. We don't get approval by man. Yes. You don't get approval because you like it. I, and I think, uh, let me tell you something, the saints of the living God, the best people on the planet, because let me tell you what the saints of the living God do. They, they give you mercy. Saints of the living God, they give you mercy. And there's been times when I walked away, and this is really in my earlier years of preaching, and I preached at a church and the saints of the living God, the mature saints, they come up to you. They say, good job, baby. You just, you just keep on studying. You just keep, <laughs> you, you, you just keep on reading that word. And God's going to bless you. He going to increase you. <laughs> and I knew what they meant by that. <laughs> what they were saying is, you, you missed it a few times, young man. But we see something good in you. And if you keep on striving, and don't get arrogant and don't get haughty, the Lord is gonna bring you up because your commendation does not come from man, but it comes from, comes from God. Elder Grizzly, what did you see in those verses there um, that Paul was talking about and then we'll close out? Yeah, I think Paul speaking to him from uh, experience, uh, pastor, uh, letting them know that, you know, they were thinking of things uh, wrong in a wrong manner they were thinking of things in a way in which they shouldn't think of and when he was speaking these words to them he was also letting them uh know and see uh his view of things uh and how that he knew the authority that he had uh so he didn't have to come in a manner in which he's trying to impress anybody uh you know, he didn't have to compare himself to anybody, but he was uh, coming in a manner in which he was letting the will of God being done in his life. He knew that the Lord had sent him to Corinth. He knew that he's the founder of that church, and he didn't have to really fight against anybody. Uh, he didn't have to uh, uh, 
used the authority that he had, and he had the authority to shut them down. We've seen <laughs> yes. many times uh, Paul in the scripture, like Bar Jesus, for example, he told him he was going to be struck blind. Yes. And, he, and, the young, and the man was struck blind. He knew he was apostle. He knew that he had the authority to, to speak something and, and something would happen to these ones that was coming against them, uh, coming against him. Yes. But he was in a humble manner. He was very, he was beseeching them. As a matter of fact, they talked about in the first scriptures, the first two verses, he was begging them. He was coming, he put himself in the manner of a servant. Yes, he wasn't sir. trying to be uh, uh, a big shot. He wasn't trying to be uh, anybody big. All he was trying to do was reap a harvest in that area. He was trying yes. to let them know, I just came preaching the gospel. That the, will, that the will of Christ might be done in your life, that you might be saved, that there might be a, a church here. And here y'all uh, uh, coming against me. And uh, don't you know that I have the authority to, to speak something and something can happen to you? But yeah. I'm going to be in a in the humble manner of a servant, and which is what you should do. You should be. Don't be comparing yourself to each other. But compare yourself and think about who saved you. Compare yourself and think about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and find the will of God in your life. Yes. That's my thoughts there, Pastor. I, I love that, Elder Grisby, and thank you for that. Such 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 wisdom um, as you're illuminating on the scriptures, you know, of what our mindset should be. Because this chapter 10 was all about that mindset, that spiritual mindset, making sure you don't fall off the wagon looking at other what other people are doing. It ain't about what other people are doing. The question is about what you're doing. You know, the, the, these people that try to tip into the church and they and they turn into super critics. You know who I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? That it, they ain't nothing right. You know what I'm saying? They, mm -hmm. they don't like the color of the chairs. You know what I'm saying? They didn't like the song. They didn't like this. They didn't like that. Didn't like that. The question is, what are you doing? Oh, I didn't like the Sunday school lesson. Well, why don't you teach the class? Come on up in Zion. Glory be to God. Amen. If you that anointed, come on, step on out. And, and instead of complaining, be a part of that solution. And so next week, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 11 on Tuesday. And remember, Bishop Noel Jones stated, and, and you know, our bishop is very busy. So I'm praying he's able to you know, I uh, still be able to come, but he did tell me that he'll be here next Tuesday online and he'll be uh, kind of supping with me. I thank God for him agreeing to do that. That'll be Tuesday. We'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And then on Wednesday, we'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 12. And once we're done um, with um, Corinthians, because there's only one other lesson after that, we're moving right into six weeks on the Holy Ghost. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I found one of my first books um, that I wrote. In fact, it is the, the first booklet that I ever wrote, and it's called The Holy Spirit. And I've already sent it to the elders. And for those of you who are watching via live stream, if you'd like a copy of that book, um, a booklet, it's a booklet, I want you to just uh, email the church at Bethesda experience at gmail.com. Um, but to the saints that are connected to Bethesda, um, especially those who are online, I'm gonna have Angie reach out to the saints and I can mail out a copy so that you can follow along. In fact, Elder Grisby and Ron, they're gonna be preaching this weekend uh, from that curriculum. But, but the Lord is going to bless us as we study on the Holy Spirit. And I'm believing that by the time, because they're talking about opening up um, they're talking about up, opening up uh, the business again, and we know that um, basically with infectious disease, um, when you're opening it up, this means that uh, some people may get infected. So what I'm praying for is the Lord keep his people, because now they're talking about opening it back up, and so, and we know people need a job, people need income, people all the coming, but we want the Lord to turn the tide Glory be to God. The Lord can do it, y'all. You got to believe that he yes. can do it. Yes. You got to believe that the Lord can just blow a wind and that they get up on the news and say, we don't know what happened. It seems in a day, nobody else is infected. The Lord can do it. So we got to pray and trust that God 
Hallelujah. And Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We got to believe that he can turn these winds. Glory be to God. So we want to have a closing prayer. Those of you who are online, those of you who are listening by phone, um, who have access to uh, giving uh, via a text message, you can do that. Text B2EXP to 77977. In fact, I'm going to sow my seed right now because um, <clears throat> the Lord had put it on my heart earlier. And then I started running around. I should have did it right then. Lord, forgive me. Sow that seed right when you hear about it. Um, yes, yes, I'm sowing my honey. Lord gave me a, a tie. Um, so you want to sow your seed, text B2EXP to 77977. Um, and, we, and we also, I want you to know that tomorrow I'm teaching a minister's class. Um, and it'll be via Zoom. It won't be on Facebook. Well, I don't know. I've been having thoughts. I might push it out. But I want to have some intimate talk first with the ministers via Zoom. Um, and if you're connected to the house of God um, that, that I'm pastoring, one of those houses, please uh, let us know so you can get that Zoom code and you can be in that meeting. Um, I'm also asking for, I have asked to see if uh, uh, one of our longtime uh, Bethesdians uh, could come on to that meeting. I was trying to see if Bishop Graham could come to that meeting. Let me see, did we get a confirmation that he can? Um, let me see real quick before we hang up. Uh, um, he Okay, he's doing Bible study right now. So we're gonna try to contact him, but I'm trying to have Bishop Graham on um, to uh, work to, to the ministers tomorrow. And then note this people of God, um, on Friday, um, I will be on for a Friday night live. I'm going to start doing a teaching and I'll have some special guests on. Uh, and then we will have our services on Sunday. I don't want you to miss it. Now we had about a total of 4,000 people, I believe total that watched the live stream on uh, this past Sunday. And um, the goal is 10,000. I believe if 10,000 souls from all over connect with the Desert churches that not only will their life be blessed, um, but they'll be able to go out and do great works. So please, please, please like and share. If you have not already liked the Bethesda Churches on Facebook, please do that. Go ahead and like the Champion Center on Facebook um, and, and um, stay uh, connected to the house of God. And we're praying your strength. Let's have a word of prayer right now. Dear gracious Father, I bless you and glorify you because you're so good and kind to even give Thank us you. the mind to want to worship you. We give you the glory right now. We praise you. We lift you up. We say that you are our Yahweh. You are our great God, great Jehovah. Hallelujah. And we call you by your covenant name, Jesus, because there is no other name given on men whereby we must be saved. So now, dear Lord God, I ask that you would just penetrate our heart and just allow for that word to hit good ground. We pray, dear Lord God, that it would bring fruit in our life, fruit in our neighbor's life, fruit in our family's life. In your matchless name. Now, dear Lord God, we pray for all of those that heard this word. I come asking whatever their personal need is that you meet it, God. Let them see a supernatural miracle in their life. Somebody came with a sick body. I ask that you would heal. Somebody came, dear Lord God, with a hurting heart. I ask that you would heal. Somebody came with a confused mind. I ask that you would give direction. Somebody came, dear Lord God, with some struggles. I ask, dear Lord God, that you would put them on a solid place. Dear Lord God, I ask that you would raise up a standard against the enemy in your matchless name. Now, dear Lord God, as we leave this place, we don't want to leave your presence. Dear Lord God, bless Fresno, bless Fresno County, bless California, bless the United States of America. We pray for all of our leaders from the top all the way down. Give them your wisdom, give them your guidance and send your healing, dear Lord God. Forgive this nation, dear Lord God, for not loving you like you deserve. Forgive this nation, God, for not walking in your ways. Forgive this nation, God, yes. for not standing up right. Yes, but dear Lord God, have mercy on your people. Do Thank not destroy you. the righteous with Amen. the Dear Lord God, keep it all. You said that you yes, died Lord. for the whole world. So dear Lord God, touch and bless right now. Bless our neighbors who don't know you. Dear Lord God, strengthen them right now. Cause them to get to know you. Dear Lord God, prepare us before the rapture and we glorify you. For it's all done in your matchless, immutable name. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. 
Those of you who are on the phone, God bless you. We love you in Jesus name. And we'll be back on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday on the phone line. Um, and also this Sunday on the phone line uh, for the message. God bless you all in Jesus name. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, man of God. I'm going to log off a of Zoom and we will let the people rejoice. Amen. Make sure you all liked and shared, liked and shared, and that you gave your offering in Jesus' name. He's going to give back to you a harvest. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God bless you, Elder Grisby. Good to see you, man. God bless you, sir. Great job.